Securities offered through Satera Advisor Networks, LLC, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through CWM, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Satera Advisor Networks, LLC, is under separate ownership from any other named entity. Carson Partners, a division of CWM, LLC, is a nationwide partnership of advisors. This is The Way to Wealth. With host Scott Ford, a jujitsu fighting, woodworking, beekeeping entrepreneur who is also the managing director, partner, and wealth advisor of Carson Wealth. Financial freedom is the goal, and clarity and simplicity is how we'll get there. Let's get to it. This is Way to Wealth. Hello, and welcome back to the Way to Wealth podcast, where we're all about making money simple so you can focus on living a fulfilled, complete life and do that now. Excited today with me, have a special guest, a wealth advisor on the team that is certainly an A player to have on the team and uh, excited to have on the podcast. So welcome to the Way to Wealth podcast, Ashley Sowers. Thank you, Scott. So looking forward to jumping in. So just as a reminder, the Way to Wealth is about making money simple. If you want to get more of the framework, you can go back and listen to prior podcasts as far as the framework. Today, we're going to look at cash flow and control. And I'm excited about that for a lot of reasons. But one of the main reasons is like, that's the game. You know, all these other things that we work on with the way to wealth or anything in financial planning and money management leads to, in my mind, cash flow and control. So super excited to jump into this. Having said that, certainly the audience not everyone may know who Ashley Sowers is. So I would, and though we know you're an all-star and great at what you do as a wealth advisor on the team, would love for the audience to have an opportunity to hear a little bit about your backstory. Sure. Well, thanks for having me on today. So born and raised in Washington County, and I was thinking a little bit about, you know, how did I come to get in this role specifically here on the team at Carson Wealth? And so my dad was in accounting, so he always had this background of knowing where money went and how the numbers worked. And then when I was 11, he launched off on his own and started his own business. So I specifically remember stuffing envelopes, you know, back in the day when you mailed marketing in the U.S. mail, no social media back then. So helped him get and launch into a business. And almost at the same time, he bought his first investment property. So I watched him do all these little small things. And then my grandmother used to do her taxes by hand, paper and pencil. <laughs> and she call the IRS, ask her questions. But you know what? That She did her taxes up until when she passed when she was 82. And she always knew how her money was flowing. She knew what was going on. And she started me a Roth IRA um, the first year they came out, 1997. And what she did is say, every year, show me your W-2s and I'll match what you made and put it into your Roth, which I had no idea at the time that what that powerful tool was creating for me. So I've always had these great family mentors. So I knew like money created options. So I knew I wanted to do something in finance of being able to help people so I, my first part of my career, I joined M&T Bank and I worked there for 16 years. That's how I got introduced into the security side of the business, got licensed. And eventually I ended up managing about 24 branches throughout Maryland. So I got to see and help people of all different kinds, but I started to realize I wasn't able to help as many people specifically that I wanted to, like really help people understand finances. So I made a pivot and joined um, the Carson team. It's been about two years now. So my family, back, actually, it's been clients here for 20 years. I've known Scott for many years and came to a client appreciation event and knew this is a team that thinks about it very much like I do. It's very holistic and it's always making sure people are educated because if you don't know how these vehicles work, it's going to be really hard to get to where you want to go and have choices and freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, that's really interesting. So thinking about your grandmother and doing her own taxes and, you know, writing it in and knowing where yeah. everything went, it makes me think about control and knowing that at that depth that not everyone's going to want to do their own taxes yet there's power in understanding what's going on because I've heard it said many times. So I now use this, 
align a bit. And that is when you know what's going on, you'll know what to do. And that's like a classic example. So that's, that's, a, that's an interesting story. And it makes me think, why is making money simple important to you? So I think of a couple of things of like, well, I know when I was in college, I saw someone use a credit card to pay for pizza one night, right? It was a $15 pizza that ended up costing him $150 later because he didn't quite understand what he was using, right? That tool created this huge consequence. Um, working in banking, I saw hundreds of people who didn't understand cash flow and their checking accounts could be hundreds, sometimes even thousands of dollars overdrawn. The, the anxiety and the worry that causes if people don't understand how money works, just that's such a burden. And I know for myself, because I felt like I knew where I could go or how to manage money or how to get a loan or how to save, I just felt a sense of comfort. And I have this huge desire to take that burden off of other people if we can give them those tools. It just, it's so insurmountably helpful to know how this all works. You know, there's one other thing, I know we've talked about this a lot of financial literacy. I wish it was a requirement in, in school, you mm -hmm. know? Sure, we. I, I remember learning how to write a check in school. They taught us that, but did they teach me what an IRA was, a 401k, the difference in taxation? Um, those tools are so important, and I definitely have learned this, you know, from you, Scott. Of when I know what I'm, what's happening, I will make different decisions. And these little snippets, you can only learn them in small bites. You can't take all, all take it all in at once, but. The more we teach people this, they will feel empowered and hopefully have more choices in their life then. Yeah. Yeah. That's super helpful and interesting. And I think it's, it's so neat to hear um, everyone's backstory and then even hear the backstory on money because we're so affected by, you know, our upbringing and what we hear. And you had great positive impacts from your dad being in accounting, your grandmother doing her taxes. And then sometimes it's not the case. And so you can kind of put this pattern together to go, okay, I see where we're stuck here and help coach people along. And the other thing that I think about on when I think of making money simple is like, what's the biggest cause of health challenges in the country. And I think everyone would tell you it's stress. Some of the biggest stressors in people's lives. And a lot of times it's money. It can create issues in marriages. It can create issues in families. And so it's like, yeah, if we can just make this simple, like how can we get money to be made simple and simplify it so that it serves us instead of hurts us. And yet it sounds like that's what you're saying, which is why we love having you on the team. And you're such a great team member because that, you know, you know, when you're fit on core values and beliefs like this, then everything else seems to fall into place. So one question that I, we're going to talk about cash flow and control today. So I'd like to start with just asking you, when, when I say cash flow and control, what's that mean to you? So for me, it's financial independence. Um, it's being able to have the ability to make choices. So recently heard this, and this is completely the best definition I've heard of finance, cash flow and control, is being able to do what I want, when I want, with who I want. Hmm. So if you have the cash flow to be able to make changes or take care of you know, leap on opportunities when you see them, you dictate what's happening in your life, not a job, not a family member, you know, not situation like I can control what I'm doing. So I'll give you an example. Um, when I decided that I wanted to make this career pivot, um, it's like, why jump right into the next thing? So it's like, maybe I could take a little hiatus in my mid thirties and not work for um, a couple of months, which is a little out of the box, but in simultaneously, my husband also was doing a career pivot. So we both did not work for many, many months. And we had a, a child who was seven at the time. And that is the, that was so empowering to know that I had planned and had resources in the right vehicles 
that we could control our money flow. So we knew that we would be fine to take several months off of work. But I will also tell you, Scott, in those months, even though I had known I had planned, I still did have some anxiety about spending money. And it was a huge appreciation moment for me of like, some people live like this every day Mm. and they never have that ability to relax or know that it's all going to be fine if the stock market crashes or they lose their job. So I, it was such a blessing to do that for multiple reasons, but the huge appreciation I gained during those few months was clearly there was a reason I needed to do that. Yeah. That's such an interesting point that you bring up that feeling. um, That's so cool that you're able to do that. And to me, like by far our most valuable asset is our time. Everyone. I mean, you know, and that's why I'm so driven to make money simple so that people get to the end because we're all we're all getting there and that's OK. It's part of the journey and be able to look back and be like, yep, I, I did what I want, how I wanted um, versus having regrets, you know, and living in fear. It'd be better to live in abundance and get there gracefully and be like, you know what? Yep. Happy with the journey. And you're talking about that piece of concern. And I've seen it. I've been doing this since 91. And so working with lots of people through the years, some make that transition. And I don't know the percentage, but you know, it's, it's um, more than I'd like to see it. The transition from working and you got that income coming in. And I've seen, you know, super high net worth make that transition and still feel scared and like, because the income went away. So now all of a sudden, where's it going to come from? And what that speaks to me is back to the control piece. It's like, if you understand how you're invested or what you're allocated in, whether it's a business, whether it's in the market, whether it's real estate, if you're in something that you understand enough, that puts you back in control. So when I think of cash flow and control, I think it lowers risk. And here's what I mean. I think control, obviously cash flows the game. And I think controls the game because with control, I think you are lowering risk by this. When you're in control, part of my definition of that is you're understanding what you have. So there's an education piece. I'm like, ah, so when you really understand and look, the biggest risk uh, investors make and people in planning make is doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. It's always the biggest risk and we see it. So how do you negate that? In my mind, it's education. So you've heard me say this a lot and you'll hear me say it a lot more. It's like the three missing elements in in our industry is there's not nearly enough listening. Like you hear 10, 20, 30% of a conversation launched a solution where you really need to get to the last five to 10%. And there's not nearly enough teamwork where people are working synergistically and collaborating. Everyone wants to be the smartest person in the room instead of just getting to the best answer. And then third, not nearly enough education, which is what this podcast is about. It's what the way to, way to wealth is about. And for me, um, that understanding, once you get the understanding through education, which we're here to help you with, that puts you back into control where you wouldn't have that feeling like you had. And these retirees, pre-retirees will have a less feeling. So to me, that's part of what it's about as well. Yeah. Knowing exactly how all of these work is so important. Like they, I think of like clients that we help or even myself is, do you know if you have an emergency or an opportunity where you're going to go? And then after that, where would you go? And then where would you go? Like, what's the roadmap look like? And you and I have talked about this before, but it's like, if people don't know where to get started or haven't had someone mentor them, like you got to get people to help you because this stuff can be complicated. So if someone doesn't sit down and help you and educate how this all works together or how the cash flow would come if you needed something or just for everyday income or for an opportunity, you got to get help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Agreed. And so thinking back, um, you know, you mentioned your dad being in accounting and your grandmother doing taxes. So this should, this will resonate with you. And I know it already does, but we had developed a one page tool and the, the tool is just a way to look at, first of all, we like one page tools for multiple reasons because you learn best. Everyone learns differently yet like reading, writing, um, listening, talking, all these things help with capturing the understanding that you need. So that's the idea of these tools. So this specific one page tool is looking at assets and liabilities, 
and income and expenses. So like a balance sheet. And where I think people miss it is they look at debt. But, but when you really look at assets and liabilities, that's not debt. If your asset's greater than your liability, it's not a debt, it's a liability. You have this million dollar asset because it's greater than your liability. So let's just do easy math and say it's $2 million, but there's a million dollar owed. You got a million dollar uh, asset there. That's beautiful. Well, if that's your house, that's okay. You may be making memories and you may, you know, you're, you're, you and your spouse and kids and everyone loves it. That's great. It's not that powerful though, because it's actually taking money. So when you, you have to take it down to the income and expense piece. So if that's putting money in your pocket, ah, that's a, that's a producing. So how I like to look at it is, yes, it's good to have equity. And, and then can we use that equity to be more productive? So when you think of assets, liabilities, and you think of income and expenses, you're wanting cash flow. That's back to the cash flow and control piece. So is this thing putting money in my pocket or taking money out? So part of the exercise we like to talk through on this one pager is can we be more efficient with this balance sheet we're looking at? Is there lazy assets in here that we can make work? Or is it cool that they're lazy and we're just benefiting from it, but we're knowing, but it's good to know that. So it's the same thing how I look at life in general. I think it's good to be a producer. I think dollars follow value. So if you're producing goods in the world and you're serving and making things better, every moment presents itself for you to lift it. And if you're doing that, dollars follow that because you're bringing value. It's the same on your balance sheet. So we just want to make sure we're being efficient and putting things uh, to work efficiently or knowing I'm cool with it. It's lazy. It's sitting there. It's, it's equity, but it's not really throwing uh, cash flow off. What are your thoughts on, on that? Totally agree. I look at um, assets, liabilities exactly the same way. And um, I've been blessed through the mentorship through my father and um, some other family members to do investment real estate. So you know, I think about 2008. So I was in banking at the time. So I was tons of people losing huge amounts in their investment por portfolio, which I am also invested in. But I've also been working on diversification. You mentioned risk earlier. When you know there's risk, the easiest way to get rid of risk is to diversify. So you got to keep thinking about what other kinds of vehicles, what kind of income producing assets can I put in my toolbox so that regardless of what's happening, I have predictability when it comes to cash flow. So even though the stock market crashed in 2008, I still had predictable income coming in from those income producing assets. Even if the value of those um, properties would have been appraised at the time, it'll look like a huge drop, but it doesn't change my cash flow. Um, so you got to, I know you agree. And that's all the things we're thinking about. Like it's those sorts of things that you always have to be thinking about. Is this going to help or is this going to take away? Is this going to put a burden on my cash flow? What's the possibilities and be thinking about it from that risk perspective. Yep. Yep. And so to that point, absolutely. So if you think back in 2000 and really six, when the housing market started to crack yeah. all the way through eight. And so you, you could have a property, a rental property out there, a $400,000 value potentially had dropped to 200. It's like, Easy. ouch. However, if the tenant stayed and the rent was the same, your cash flow, you were able to navigate that because it was a cash flow producing asset. So it's just, how are you looking at this? Um, and is that a strength? Do you like investing in real estate? If you do and you're good at it, absolutely make it part of your plan. What we do is you are well aware of when you look at investing in other investments, so maybe the stock market or bonds or other alternatives is our three bucket approach in our way to wealth process. And so we want everyone and have them with a minimum of one year in savings. And we like to see 10 years in uh, income and somewhat, you know, some of that guaranteed, some don't, but 10 years and then, you know, the rest in growth, 10 year plus money. Well, again, now you can see, ah, I got cash flow. I'm good for 10 years. So any of this, again, education, any of this volatility, it puts you back in the driver's seat of control. So you're not doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. So it's, it's part of why we designed it this way to put you back in control so you can navigate most, most any, any market. 
When you think about options out there and thinking through the lens of cash flow and control, what are your thoughts on vehicles or where you put your money and how does cash flow and control play into that? So, so much of the vehicle options, and we're talking about, you know, IRAs, 401ks, Roths, HSAs, there's, first of all, there's a ton of education. People really do need to understand the basics of all of those. And then who makes the rules? So some of those, you know, there's limits on how much you can put in. There's limits on when you can take it out. There's limits on how much you can take out or the opposite there's a minimum you have to take out whether you need it or not. So it's really, really important that you educate yourself on how all of these vehicles work and the restrictions and or who's in control of them. So we have many clients who, you know, they did what they thought they always should have and put huge amounts of their savings in tax deferred accounts. So they're walking into retirement feeling really, really good and then we'll show them projections. Well, here's how much you're going to have to take in required minimum distributions, which, okay, well, that doesn't seem like that big of a deal. You're forced to take this huge amount of money. Well, they might not need all of that money, yet now they have no ability to control the tax burden at that time, the cash flow. So educating yourself across the three different tax vehicles of tax deferred taxable, tax-free is really, really important. And then what are the options under each of those funnels? You know, it could be insurance solutions, it could be HSA, whatever. There's a multitude of things that put you in control of when you pull out your money. Yeah, that's it, you know, and it's like, uh, it's the, that's how I see it as well, as how it ties into cash flow and control is, not, we're not saying don't use it. It's, it's, it's applicable in certain scenarios and as, as a piece of an overall portfolio. At times, though, it's pushed so much that people end up with the majority of their money in an asset that they really don't have that much control over. So we're just saying, mm, think about it. There's other options out there. It may make sense to look to, to truly diversify. And again, do it through the lens of, is this going to provide good cash flow and what control do I have of that asset? Yeah, because if an emergency or an opportunity arises, can you get to it? That's yes. what you want to know, right? Or if your life um, trajectory changes, you want to retire a little bit early, go work optional a little bit early, do you have that flexibility? Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. That's such a good point because when you look at cash, sometimes people are thinking that minimum one year, yes, for emergencies and opportunities. So yeah. it's also not just ah, emergencies, that's boring. Opportunities present themselves and typically find those that have cash. So it's important to have that allocated. So thanks for sharing, Ashley. This has been fun. And when you look through the lens of uh, wealth management, it all typically comes down from our standpoint and vantage point, cash flow and control. So thanks for uh, listening to the Way to Wealth podcast, where we're all about making money simple, allowing you the freedom to really fully live now. See you next time. The opinions voiced in Way to Wealth with Scott Ford, Managing Director, Partner, and Wealth Advisor of Carson Wealth are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. Investing involves risk, including possible loss of principal. No strategy assures success or protects against loss. To determine what may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial, or tax advisor prior to investing. Guests on Way to Wealth are not affiliated with CWM LLC or Satara Advisor Networks LLC. Carson Wealth, 19833, Leitersburg Pike, Suite 1, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21742.